So I should have known to keep my mouth shut on an alpha <laughs> before it was too fully fixed. Uh, been fiddling around with it again today. Stuart's been having a poke about on it. We've had it plugged in, trying to work out what the score is with it. So just as a recap, uh, it came in, it had zero boost. So we replaced the, um, the pressure sensor for the turbo and now it has, it flies, it absolutely flies when it comes on boost. Issue is it doesn't come on boost until two and a half thousand, absolutely dead below that. And then it takes off like an absolute rocket. So we've been trying to work out what it is. We thought it might be the position of the uh, the arm on the turbo, but we I think we've nailed it down to now being likely to be the EGR valve. Um, we've plugged it in and tried to get a reading for the EGR valve moving, and it doesn't seem to be moving. So the next job is to get it out, but unfortunately that does mean taking all this throttle body and all this off here and having a dig down there and finding it. Um, so this is the problem when you've got money tied up in the cars and you can't turn them around quickly. We've had this for like a week now. I haven't got around to doing the paintwork on it yet. I think the wheels are gonna need going over as well. Lots of interest in the car. I've had lots of messages about it. I mean, at under, I've said I was gonna do it at 3995 at that money. It is a cheap car and especially, like I say, we put the new MOT on it, which is advisory free and that MOT is ticking down now. I really don't want to, to, I want to sell it with the full 12 months on it, so I don't want that to tick down too much, but there's a few things to get done on it. Um, maybe I can get started on the wheels while we're doing that, I don't know. Um, I still haven't got around to giving the car a good polish and a, and a clean up yet, and as, as uh, you, if you've watched previous videos, you know I've got this with a big load of lacquer peel on the bonnet that I need to sort out. Once that's done, this is going to be a blooming stunning car. I mean, once it's all, I mean, even now dirty, it looks great in this red, but once it's polished up, and all that's tidied up and we've done that work on it i mean and an advisory free mot on an alpha this age alone is a is a good indicator that it's a cracker of a car um so we are once that's done low mileage for a diesel being seventy thousand miles once we've got this stuff done it's going to be an absolute cracker of a car it's just i get very frustrated when i've got the money tied up in the cars and they're not actually for sale and i guess that's a, a you know one of the problems i have with having limited space at the moment is that i can't put other cars in the space and start turning them over so a lot of people have been asking about the unit i am still in talks on that unit and i'm hoping we can close that off i'm equally uh excited and terrified at the same amount as uh, committing committing to a unit um i will say now I give away a little bit of it now it's it's going to be two if it goes ahead it's going to be the two units i'm going to have 2600 square foot inside um probably giving me about as much room as we've got in here minus sort of that that end down there um and then 15 parking spaces outside we negotiate 15 parking spaces outside so i should have room in total i would say for in the region of I reckon that squeeze 35 35 cars so um it's going to give me the opportunity to expand but obviously it's a big commitment as well and i've got to fill that space with stock otherwise it's not point paying for it so uh yeah when it's definitely come off you know we'll go and do a little tour of the place once we've definitely got it signed off but it looks like it probably is going ahead so for those of you that keep asking me in um and I've uh, been a bit quiet about getting on with it. That's, so that's what the score is. The trouble is I am going to be taking up some spaces like with me, uh, MGB Sebring. And I have bought another project that I haven't told you guys about yet um, that will have to go into the new unit as well. At the moment it's in storage somewhere else, but I bought another project and it's in bits like this. So probably not the smartest move in the world. So there's two spaces gone inside already. But my idea is if I go for the two units is one half, I think I want to put an inflatable spray booth in the back of the unit. And then in front of it, I'll have a little scissor lift. And then we can do all the dirty work in that side. And the other side, I'm going to keep clean for the, 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 the you know, for when it's wet outside to do the dry cleaning of the cars, the, you know, the, the polishing and that kind of stuff, the not too messy stuff. And for presentation and for photos and a bit of office space. So that's, that's the score on the unit. I'll update you as soon as I know some more. So we left off the alpha for a little bit got onto this at July 10 because we want to get this up for sale so uh, me and PD have double teamed it I've been working on the back end and uh, sanded out all the marks in the rear bumper standard process sander 
120 because there was quite some quite bad gouges I'd normally start around 200 or 400 but 120 240 400 uh, 800 and uh, sorry 800 is the areas outside these are 400 where the and that's now been plastic prime before I put on the thicker filler primer there'll be a second coat of filler primer going on in a minute and PE's been on the front end and he's fitted that replacement wing for us from the uh, same color car so uh, obviously that's been cleaned and the car hasn't been cleaned yet so uh, trust me in reality they are both exactly the same color so we just test his uh, panel gap fag paper Pete you get a fag paper in there beautiful and uh, so I've just got to do a little repair here on the edge of the edge of the bumper there so we can spray that bit uh, there was some marking on this side now I've actually uh, cleaned it off with some tea cut there's only a little bit left on the edge here. I'll just touch that in actually no point spraying the whole of that there was a dent in that wing but it was on this shallow part here wasn't it so, uh, sorry this flat part here so I just got my hand behind it and it boinged straight out so that's that's absolutely fine and there were some marks down the side of the car but again they were just sitting on top of the paint so I just cleaned them off so it's actually coming up really quite clean this one so a bit more fettling and uh, Shisha should be good to go in for her MOT so uh, yeah just going on and finish that paint off tonight and then try and get it in for an MOT tomorrow ideally so I stayed a little bit later got the repair done to the front got it all painted up um, so you've got your colour and then you've got some fade out thinner there and uh, on the back the light's not so good around here but uh, yeah got the edges of the bumpers done we've got a nice gloss shine to it probably easier for me to show this side with the light the way it is got a nice shine going on on it so we'll buff that in the morning um we've got a, it's just a bit faded here because obviously it's where the fade out thinner is and it was keyed up um and then hopefully get it in for its mot bodywork wise it's really good other than that i think once we buff the rest of the body it's going to be a super clean little i10 got great rubber all the way around loads and loads of tread on it um sounds good engine wise and gearbox wise so like i say we'll get it in for an mot and hopefully it won't need too much there the little fiat 500's had its uh, new mot it's gone in for its retest so now what i'm doing is going around it i've uh, put tar remover on it that's all been all the way around brushed that off now i'm going around with a little cheap uh, rubber clay bar to get all the remaining contaminants off and then we'll give it a polish and get the photo shoot done it needs to be in top nick we're going to be having to ask good money for this having put the gearbox and the clutch and all that in so um we need to make it as minty as possible come around and clay barred it all now and you can see the difference it makes to the bodywork of the car um perhaps you can't on camera in here in real life you can it just pulls all the contaminants out of the paint so if you haven't, aren't familiar with these clay bars which traditionally are a block of clay that you rub over the bodywork and it pulls contaminants out of the paint um, and use it with a bit of soapy water and it pulls the contaminants out of paint and if you then give the car a polish afterwards you've already got all the dirt out of the paintwork and it comes out that even better but you can buy these cheap ones on ebay which are little rubber clay bars they only work for a couple of times and then you must throw them away but it takes a little bit of time but you just basically just rub it over the bodywork with some soapy water wash it afterwards and it just pulls everything out of the paint and you're left with a really clean contaminant free i mean i've missed a bit there perhaps i can show it's a bit dirt there by the window if i show myself rubbing that in there see it's pulled it well it does do this if you've got anti-tar still on there some of the rubber will come off the pad so you've got to go back with anti-tar again but it's pulling the dirt off the top of the surface there and um yeah well worth doing if you want to properly prep a car you've got your own car or you've got a car you flip in and you don't have to do a lot of mechanical work to it and stuff spending the time doing this makes a hell of a difference it's just going to pop that much more for the pictures and when someone comes to see it you can see this all the really nice you know cut up whites especially it comes out that much brighter afterwards so the little 500's done she's had a photo shoot i've gone round and used a fallout remover on the alloy wheels to get all the brake dust off of those i've uh, like i say you saw me clay bar the bodywork on it give it a polish afterwards and then they're giving it a treatment with a sealant so the paintwork is really really popping now you look down it and there's no marks to see the bodywork is really free there's no they suffer quite a lot from dents normally because they've got no bump strips so there's no dents down the side of the car at all 
it's all in really really nice nick it gave the headlights a little bit of a polish nothing too crazy it's a light polish but yeah overall really really clean condition as you know the boys over the road did their wet clean on the interior so that's come out really nicely so i've done a walk around video for potential buyers i've done a photo shoot as well it all takes a bit of time doing the walk around videos but in this day and age they're definitely worth doing people are prepared to buy from quite a far away so they can um, see the videos and obviously the video gives me an opportunity to go through the work we've done on this as I say when you get to this age with the Fiat 500 your biggest risk really is your gearbox or potentially your ECU but your ECU is super work simple work to do labor wise it's um it's easy to do your gearbox is your biggest thing because you're in half a day in labor plus the cost of a gearbox then you're going to have to do the clutch at the same time so that's your biggest cost with one of these really but the 1.2 engine itself is pretty unburstable i've done mega miles and without a problem but yeah quite proud of this one it's come out looking really really nice i did have a um a one of my subscribers parents popped by today they've been recommended to come down and look at cars they looked at this they looked at the little hyundai i10 so whoever that was thanks for sending them sending them down nothing was quite ready for them to uh, sort of make a decision on yet because it wasn't ready this one was going back in for mot the i10's got to get the tracking done go back in for mot um and i have got a little ford ka coming in from one of our subscribers I'm not quite sure if he wants me to discuss that on camera or not but one of our subscribers who runs a who's a trader as well um had a trade in he's got a 2000 and i want to say 13 or is it 14 ford ka with only 14,000 miles on it there's an ex cat n that we've done a deal on so i'm getting that down hopefully um in next week i haven't won anything on the auctions again today i'll go and double check um but now again i think the bidding was too strong on that i've got a lead on some private purchases locally that i think i'll investigate and um see where i can get with that again the money people are asking for is pretty strong privately as well at the moment but at least i get to go out and see them i guess so i think i might be doing that maybe take you along with me and see how we get on with that i've done a couple of videos like that before where i've taken you along with me to the private ones to have a little look see so i think that's what i'm going to have to do um, to get the stock levels up because I am very short at the moment and uh, no bites on the Mazda MX-5 even though it's like I say it's what is it six seven hundred pounds under book at the moment uh, but again I do get quite spells in the middle of the month I find the beginning and the end of the month busiest some of you might be right might be the wrong time of year for it but I've definitely got the keenest price on it at the moment so we'll get this one listed up tonight and we'll see um see how we get on 500 is normally is a general rule shift pretty quickly for me so we'll see I just quit one on the 500 on the tyre side of things. Um, the MOT testers won in that debate in the comments. Every MOT tester that came on and commented in the comments said that they would not have given those as an advisory as they're so far above the um, wear indicators. I can kind of see where my MOT tester is coming. He's, he's working on a very inside edge, but most of them say it doesn't really count because it's not the part of the contact area. Um, so I'm I'm leaving those again. It can be worked as a negotiation if anyone's worried about it, but I'm not worried about it at all. Um, I can see that there is plenty of tread left for anybody going out in the car. It's not unsafe. The wear indicator is there for goodness sake, and you've got what three or four mil above the wear indicator. So I'm I'm going to leave those as they are. If someone really wants to negotiate on it, we can, and I'll let them put some on at cost. But you've got to draw the line somewhere, guys. <laughs> 